From the CISO series, it's Cybersecurity Headlines. It's Wednesday, June 9th, 2021. Stack Overflow, Twitch, Reddit, and others down in Fastly CDN outage. A who's who of major websites around the world, also including Amazon, CNN, Shopify, Hulu, Quora, the BBC, and others, went down or slowed down yesterday. Browsers received a 503 service unavailable notice or CSS free web pages as the content slowed or failed to arrive. The outage was traced to San Francisco based Fastly, a popular content delivery network. Fastly calls the occurrence, which lasted just an hour, a global CDN disruption. Hundreds arrested in massive global crime sting using messaging app. More than 800 suspected criminals have been arrested worldwide after being tricked into using an FBI-run encrypted messaging app, officials say. The operation, jointly conceived by Australia and the FBI, saw devices with the ANOM Anom app secretly distributed among criminals, allowing police to monitor their chats about drug smuggling, money laundering and even murder plots. The idea for the operation came after two other encrypted platforms were taken down by law enforcement agencies, leaving criminal gangs in the market for new secure phones. The devices were initially used by alleged senior crime figures, giving other criminals the confidence to use the platform. Capitol Hill tech vendor is the latest ransomware victim. An email newsletter provider with dozens of customers on Capitol Hill has suffered a ransomware attack, the U.S. House of Representatives confirmed Tuesday iConstituent is a platform designed to help government officials reach out to the voting public. House Chief Administrative Officer Catherine Spindor said that the office is not aware of any House data being impacted by the breach thus far. 47% phishing increase in the first quarter of 2021. Fish Labs identified 47% more phishing sites in Q1 of 2021 than there were in Q1 of 2020. This trend is continuing as Q2 attacks are also up significantly year over year. Social media, especially messaging apps, topped the list for the first time, suggesting that threat actors are increasingly drawn to the massive reach and often careless user attitudes towards the security of their social media accounts. Accounts used for single sign-on were also heavily targeted in Q1, accounting for 40% of overall phishing volume. And now, a word from our sponsor, Trend Micro. Want to discover new ways to simplify and strengthen your security? Join Trend Micro Perspectives on June 16th, where industry experts and practitioners will share deep insights and real-world examples on how security can play a pivotal role in accelerating your digital transformation. Featuring speakers from Gartner, Forrester, ESG, AWS, and Microsoft. Visit trendmicro.com forward slash perspectives to register. Windows Virtual Desktop is now Azure Virtual Desktop. As a result of the pandemic-induced ongoing remote work scenario, Microsoft has rebranded its Windows Virtual Desktop to Azure Virtual Desktop. According to Cam Vebrat, Microsoft's general manager for Azure Virtual Desktop, the change was done largely in response to interest from large enterprises and small businesses that suddenly had to find ways to better support their remote workers. The Azure Virtual Desktop offers enhanced support for Azure Active Directory that will allow software vendors to deliver their apps as a SaaS solution. Vebrat also noted that more customers are starting to see Windows in the context of Azure Cloud rather than a standalone brand. Vulnerability affecting Microsoft Office, included in Patch Tuesday. Four security vulnerabilities discovered in the Microsoft Office suite, including Excel and Office Online, could be potentially abused by bad actors to deliver attack code via Word and Excel documents. Three of the four flaws were fixed by Microsoft as part of its Patch Tuesday update for May 2021, with the fourth patch issued in June's update that rolled out yesterday. Arising out of parsing mistakes made in legacy code found in an obscure Excel 95 graphing format, the vulnerabilities were made to be more serious due to the ability for the entire Office suite to embed Excel objects, thus broadening the attack vector to all Office software, including Word, Outlook, and PowerPoint. Adobe patches major security flaws in PDF Reader and Photoshop. 
Adobe's product security response machine revved into high gear this week with the release of multiple patches for gaping security holes in widely deployed software products. This month's patches address potentially dangerous vulnerabilities in Adobe Acrobat and Reader, Adobe Photoshop, and the Adobe Creative Cloud desktop application. The most serious of the vulnerabilities could allow attackers to take complete control of a Windows or Mac OS machine with minimal user interaction. In some cases, malicious exploits can be triggered remotely to hijack unpatched machines, Adobe warned. Apple continues privacy war with app tracker reports. Apple device users will now be able to see when individual apps request to access features such as the microphone, camera, and phone gallery, plus which third parties they have connected with in the last seven days. The new app privacy report feature was unveiled at the firm's annual developers conference, WWDC. It will allow users to dive deep into when exactly an app used the permissions it has been given and what third-party websites it contacted or sent data to. Before you move on to the next podcast in your queue, be sure to head on over to CISOseries.com and register to join us for this week's CISO Series video chat, starting at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern, this Friday. This week we'll be focusing on hacking acceptable risk, an hour of critical thinking on when we should stop trying to reduce risk. Just click on the Register for Video Chats button to join us. And if you missed any of the cybersecurity headlines of the week and want to get caught up in about 20 minutes with some expert insight to boot, then join us for Cybersecurity Headlines Week in Review, live every Thursday at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern. Just head on over to CISOseries.com. And don't forget, you can always comment on our shows on Twitter using the hashtag CISO series. I'm Steve Prentice reporting for the CISO series. Cybersecurity headlines are available every weekday. Head to CISOseries.com for the full stories behind the headlines.